and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. It's been a while since we last went through a few tips and tricks to stay ahead in Fortnite Battle Royale. Well, let's put that right, right now. 35 tips watching those pro players over on Twitch. Last time I made one of these videos, I asked what your favorite skin is. So let's do it again. Greatest skin in the game? For me, it has to be Bullseye. Dang, girl. <laughs> Upvote your favorites below. Anyway, cut the chit chat, let's do this. <laughs> Fortnite has entered the era of scrims and playing for victories over kills. So we see lots of one by ones and crazy builds in later circles. There's a few structures you can build which will either give you the element of surprise or a slightly unfair advantage. The first is the sniper lookout. This one consists of a spiral staircase, and to make the gap to snipe out of, it's the top line of a wall removed. Not only does this give you great sight lines, it also gives you head glitching cover. Check out this shot lined up on a crouching foe in the sniper tower. From a low angle, it isn't possible to land the shot. The staircase takes the bullet, and when it crumbles and falls, you drop down to safety immediately. It's a little annoying to get the right angle to edit, but in sweaty end games, it's a beaut. There's a variation to this build to minimize your visibility. Instead of removing the top three tiles of a wall, try cutting the three squares in the lower corner, giving you this monstrosity. Another reliable build in one by one fights is this. Using a window and edited pyramid, it's possible to snipe out of the tiny gap. It isn't possible for all weapons to shoot through this gap, only a sniper has the ability. By the way, how do you know if a sniper likes you? He misses you, of course. <laughs> Season 7 will likely use permariths or portals for map rotation. They're already here in Season 6 in Wailing Woods. Learn where they all lead to and get the upper hand against your foes. A great way to pick up easy kills is by hiding traps above portals. They should take down the rift users. But if not, remember the sound effect of them being hit can be heard from anywhere on the map. Use it as a motion sensor, allowing you to know your enemy's position and more importantly, knowing their hurt. Have we entered the era of portal combat? Portal combat! <laughs> and speaking of the bunkers in Wailing Woods, or in fact anywhere that involves dropping down into, set up traps at the bottom, you'll be surprised how many kills you get. Even the edge of the corrupted areas during season six was an easy way to grab a quick kill or two. Okay, so the turrets. It will likely be vaulted by the time I release this video or nerfed into oblivion. But for now, here's a good way to use it. As a roof tile. Bear with me, I, I know it sounds ridiculous. The turret has a base strength of 1000 HP instantly. Wood has the integrity of 140, brick 280 and metal 460, but all take time to build. The turret on the other hand is wrecked in no time. That is a bad choice of words. The turret itself has 400 HP, pretty strong when you're low on mats and want to save your metal. On controller, the turrets mess up aim assist massively and drags the cursor away from the enemy. In trouble, throw down a few of these and run around like a headless chicken. It's surprisingly hard to hit them. Here's the same scenario without turrets. Two bullets, that's all it took. Let's move on to builds. Here's one from Mark Nutt, the ramp sniper. When in your tower, throw up a ramp on the side you're attacking. Edit the ramp and prepare to disconnect it from your build. The great thing here is that you can see through the ramp, but have invisible cover in front of needed. When the moment is right, confirm the edit and instantly shoot your sniper or whatever weapon you prefer. The ramp disintegrates and you look like you actually know how to Fortnite. This is damn good in solos, less so in squads. Here seems a good point to highlight the brilliance of two heavy snipers, or a deagle and hunting rifle, whichever you can get your hands on. The deagle and heavy sniper will take down a basic wall in a single hit. Switch quickly enough and shoot your second weapon and once again, easy kill. At present, the deagle can take down a wooden wall in a single bullet from 280 meters away. Ridiculous, that must be patched out soon, right? Ever been in a scenario where you're attempting to get into another person's build, but they are using turbo build and their ping is so high that you just don't stand a chance? Well, set up a ramp behind you and jump as you are about to break the wall. The ramp will phase you through their next wall. And now you can have your own private house party. How many times have you been combed in a build battle? Well, did you know by placing a simple wall in front of you, you can prevent your foe from dropping the pyramid over you? So simple and bloody useful to know. It's still possible to be combed, but your enemy needs to perfectly time a jump to do so. A simple wall will keep the majority of us safe. 
I personally take a deagle or heavy sniper into build battles as I get combed so often. One shot and that wall is down and then I can run away like the coward I am. <laughs> Here's an OP method to instantly get into one by one structures which is certain to be removed soon. Whilst watching Courage, he used a rocket launcher, stood on top of the building on the pyramid tile and shot just over the next triangle piece. Hey presto! No more structure and if they build again, you're already inside. Nice. Usually in Tilted Towers you'll find traps everywhere. Some people even choose to sit in a room and wait for another player to walk to their death. This may be useful to you. If your enemy is turtled up and has a trap on the ground, you can destroy it safely from outside, not even wasting a bullet. After hitting the tile once with your pickaxe and closing the door, the crit will remain in the same place and the door will allow your pickaxe to travel through it. I get that this is a very specific scenario, but hey, you never know. Speaking of random things like this, if you need a spot to hide in when the rest of your squad have died and you have only 5 health, try opening two doors next to each other and hiding behind them. <laughs> Be careful not to let your axe or weapon face through the doors and heal in peace or wait for a better moment to attack. Come on, we all know that this hiding spot is adorable. <laughs> yeah, I added that to the list just for that joke. <laughs> On the flip side of that, it's possible to block doors with your builds, but the trick is to do it partially so that you can still get shots off or better yet get nades or explosives in the room before your enemy realises the door is out of commission and they no longer have time to break through a wall. A quick note about editing ramps quickly, I never knew this but thanks to ZachGG I do now. Instead of editing stairs like this to change their direction, we only need to use these two points here. Doing so will cut half a second off your edits and get you back into the action quicker. So remember, edit like this. Let's look at balloons. Do you use them? Nah, me neither. But that may change after this. Did you know a single balloon will let you travel faster than running? Yeah, I was surprised by that one too. If you're stuck in the storm or running towards the next circle, don't ignore a stack of balloons. They could save your life. Now that Glider Redeploy has been taken out of solos, duos and squads, the balloons have even more relevance. If you're falling to your death, pop a balloon. Well not pop, but you know, you know what I mean. It will reduce and even negate all fall damage depending on the time it was deployed and how many you use. I feel like we need a pun here. <laughs> what kind of music do balloons hate? Pop music! <laughs> Sorry. Balloons can also lift the quad crashes, so you and a friend can float on high over vales and hills. The driver can use the boost function to navigate. The quad crasher is a perplexing beast which can actually fly. The best way to do this is to set up a ramp and begin boosting pointing skyward. Keep timing this right and you can travel across the map so fast it can't render quick enough and you get this stuttering effect. Lovely. Oh and don't worry about crashing, at present you don't get hurt. This may change in future so attempt to land on all fours just in case. The quad crasher doesn't actually need a ramp to do this, you can dive off any mountain or even use one of the voids to get skyward. Oh, we haven't looked at the ice traps. How much do you hate them? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I think they're here to test out mechanics for the winter season, but they do have uses beyond making your enemy skate around uncontrollably. Use them to travel great distances quickly. Perfect for escaping the storm, the added momentum is like being the flash. A recent update allows us to heal while sliding. I'm not sure if this is deliberate or a glitch, but for now, at least, heal and slide. If you're quick enough, it's possible to get off a chug jug. It's a little easier to do a med pack, and of course, it's perfection for bandages. I'm trying to think of a healing-based joke to go here. It does remind me of the time I worked at a hospital, but I got sick of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Double up the frozen blocks on your feet with the balloons for added momentum. It's like an emo Mary Poppins. Since the bleed out time was decreased, deciding when to res a teammate or to keep fighting can be a tough choice. Try this to get the best of both worlds. First, get to your brother from another mother and protect them with a one by one. Inside, place down a campfire. Once you've finished slaying the other combatants, return to get them off their hands and knees. This is an old one, but it works constantly once again. When opening a chest, the weapon almost always drops on the right hand side. If you're ever in a stalemate with a foe, remember that. You can even position yourself on the left of the chest to instantly pick up the ammo and then face right and grab the gun. Very useful for the initial drop madness. In fact, if you're ever in one of those standoff scenarios, remember your pickaxe is a freaking beast and can kill someone in five swipes. In squads, this is damn funny too. 
The ability to carry additional items has returned. If you've ever been in a scenario where you want to bring a friend a weapon but you don't have the space, or you need extra heals whilst avoiding the storm, try this. Grab the said item, look up, and right away keep spamming the item button and juggle the extra item all the way to your friend. How many times did I say item then? <laughs> Another tip which never gets old and remains my favourite thing to do in Fortnite, the fake free stuff. After building a platform, place your favourite gear atop of it to attract enemies. Underneath, be sure to place a wall and trap. Now edit the floor and confirm the edit, but make sure your head is slightly protruding. This will prevent the structure from building. The thing is, it looks permanent from anyone else's perspective. And this happens so often. I've been doing this for about a year now, but people are becoming more savvy to it, so mix it up, use areas where there has been a build fight, and think about leaving an edited wall to resemble those used by others. People will let their guard down and bring their loot straight to your feet. If you're a controller gamer, be sure to check the new updates added last month. We now have the ability to make our build speed quicker, allowing us to have low sensitivity in fights for additional accuracy, but crazy build speeds in vertical battles. The update also introduces custom configurations. I'm going to make a video about all the best ways to approach it, but one I recommend right now is changing the edit button to one of the D-pad buttons. This will cut out the waiting time needed to edit and allows for instant tile modification. Check out ZachGG and how quickly he edits this course. Don't tell him he's good, by the way, he'll get a big head. If you hate Zack as much as I do, put Zack sucks in the comments. <laughs> and like always, I'm ending with a cop out, but it's so important. Check out the patch notes, buffs and nerfs are implemented so often, you're doing yourself a disservice not looking. But it happens to us all, I forget all the time. Like recently, I didn't realize that the uh, glider redeploy had been taken out. Hmm, that was a fun way to die. So there we have it, 35 quick ways to stay ahead of your foes in Season 6 and Season 7. If you're still here, thank you so much for sticking around to the end, it does mean the world to me that someone watches more than the first 3 minutes. And alas, I will use this extra time to shamelessly plug my supporter creator link. I'm Adam Aru, if you want to support me that would be freaking fantastic, but no pressure, you be you. Anyway, I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, it's been a pleasure, I'll see you next time.